All right, guys, it's snowing out here. Uh, snowstorm Izzy's coming. Well, not coming, it's here. So I'm not gonna be able to ride this too much, but I just got this bike put together. This is Hay Bike's brand new Explore. It's called the Hay Bike Explore. Now this thing has a 20 amp hour battery. Like I said, I'm not gonna be able to do too much right now because of the snow and slick roads here. But I wanted to test out this power real quick and see what kind of power it has because it has a 750 watt motor. 24, 25, 26, 26 miles an hour, 27, 28. That's just throttle, guys. 28 miles per hour right there I hit. I should have wore a pair of glasses, guys. The snow's going to my eyes. Now, Hey Bike did send me this for review. This is one of their first bikes they got in for testing but they did confirm that the production models are the same as this bike. All right, guys, so let's test it out on this hill with just throttle only and see what kind of power it has. I'll probably take the controller out to see how many amps the controller is. So far, so good. A little bit slow, but it's pulling me up this hill. Not pedaling at all. Seven miles per hour at the top, so it's not too bad, guys. I would say it's definitely 750 watts. It's more powerful for sure than their 500 watt bikes, without a doubt. And it's definitely a lot faster. Whew. All right, all right, guys, I gotta. I gotta get back over home. This snow is too bad. It's stinging my face pretty good, guys. This bike is definitely pretty quick at 28 miles per hour with just throttle only. Whew, it's colder out here than I thought. Hopefully I'll have a few nice days to take this thing on a nice long ride. What's awesome about this bike here is that it has a 20 amp hour battery and that should get you a really good range. Now, the one thing I was a little bit disappointed about is that there is no USB charge port on the battery or anywhere up above on the display or anything. So you do lose the ability to charge via USB. It would have been nice for them to include a port on that battery because a massive 20 amp hour battery that would charge up a lot of devices if you needed it to you know what guys let's go ahead over the specs and features of the spike real quick first i think i have enough time to do that before the snow starts getting too bad these fat tires will definitely be nice for in the snow though 26 inch fat tires All right guys, so up here on the handlebars, you have a set of rubber grips. Next to that, you have a switch to turn on your headlight and the horn. You have your control pad here for turning the bike on and increasing and decreasing your pedal assist levels. They have a different type of display on this bike. It's a black and white display. It shows your odometer there in the middle, PAS levels, miles at the bottom. You can also toggle through your trip, odometer, max speed, and average speed. Over here on the right, we have a seven speed Shimano shifter, which leads down to the Shimano 14 to 28 freewheel in the back. And like I said, guys, this bike is powered by a pretty massive 20 amp hour battery. So you've got a lot of capacity there. Same type of charging system that the other Hay bikes use. This is 48 volt. However, like I said, there is no USB charge port on the battery at all anywhere or anywhere else on the bike for charging devices. That would have been real nice to have a USB charge port for being able to keep your phone charged. For the cable management on the front of this bike, you have a nice neoprene cover for the front of the wires. They all go into the frame here so you don't see any exposed wires coming down the frame, which is really nice. So really nice cable management. You don't see too many. Here's the power wire. That's where it gets the connection up there for the battery. And I gotta tell you guys, I really do like the design of the way this battery connects better up here than how the older batteries connected down here because up here, there's no way really for water to get up in this connector, I don't think. So really like this design a lot better, even though you see the power wire coming down to where the controller is down here, I feel like this is a little bit better design of how the battery connects. Now this bike is not foldable and it is sitting on a pair of 26 by four inch Chaoyang tires, both the front and the back. 
So these 26 by four inch tires are gonna be really nice for days like today when you're riding through a little bit of snow or mud, gravel, sand, things like that. If you're always riding on the road, you may not need 26 by four inch tires. You could get away with skinnier tires. However, I like the big tires on a lot of, a lot of bikes because it, it, it just makes it look a lot more massive, a lot cooler, and they're good for on the road or off road. So you do have that different option there. Now you will get a little bit more mileage out of a thinner tire because you have a little less rolling resistance. Like I said, guys, I think this makes this bike look really good having these fat tires on there. For braking, it's using a set of mechanical disc brakes coming down to a pair of Phileo brake calipers and 160 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear of the bike. Now, one thing I did notice, guys, is this rear caliper is really close to the frame on here for adjustment. It's not, gonna, it's not hitting, but it might be a little bit hard to adjust that rear caliper and a little bit harder to get to that rear adjustment bolt on the back brake pad on that rear caliper. You may need a ball head uh, Allen wrench to get in there to adjust that. And like I said, right here, you can see how this bolt's really close to this frame. So not hitting it um, should be okay. Shouldn't have no problems there but might be a little difficult to get an island wrench on there. You may need a ball head. And one other thing I noticed about the brakes, guys, is the front rotor is about a 16th inch away from that down tube on the fork. It's not hitting. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but just wanted to let you guys know that that is pretty close there. We have a Shimano Tourney derailleur coming up the KMC chain to a 48 tooth chain ring in the front and a set of large Welgo aluminum pedals. Now the step through design on this bike's really nice guys, really low step through. However, the seat height for the minimum height with that suspension seat post is a little bit high. I'll throw the measurements up here on the screen for the minimum seat height. Now you could put a regular suspension post in there and get that down a few more inches if you wanted to, if you were a shorter rider. All right guys, there's me on the bike. I'm about five foot eight and I touch with not quite my tippy toes, but pretty good I mean not too bad I could put some pressure on the seat and get that suspension post down a little bit I'm 165 pounds and I could touch a little better that way but there's the minimum seat height about right there for me being five foot eight now the light on the back is a brake light when you pull the lever it does flash and when you do have the lights on it flashes as well so that's really nice that it's a brake light I love seeing that on e-bikes especially for safety this bike does come with an included cup holder it has front suspension on the front with a preload on the left and a lockout on the right pretty much the same suspension as all the other hay bikes it has a mounting system on the front to be able to mount a front rack or basket the headlight does include a horn and it comes with both front and rear plastic fenders now the back rack on this thing is pretty big and pretty beefy man this this is probably maybe a half inch tubing but really nice heavy duty on the rack there definitely not going to have any issues with that it would have been nice to see a little rail here for being able to clip panniers on in addition if you had a bag on here uh, maybe you could still clip them on these rails not 100 percent sure on that but it would have been nice to see a little smaller thinner rail here for clipping them panniers on now the seat is pretty comfortable it does flip up and it is a suspension seat post so that's nice there for rear suspension for taking out some of those blows then you're able to remove the battery once that seat is flipped up all right guys so another thing is the throttle is limited by your pas level so right now i'm in pas level one full throttle and going about nine miles per hour so the throttle is limited by your pas level so you will not have full throttle unless you're in pas level five And I noticed, guys, this bike does have 40 miles on it, so somebody must have had this and tested it out before I got it. Because like I said, this is a test bike, so they probably unlocked the speed out of the box. I'm not sure if it comes unlocked at 28 miles per hour, but I'm sure you can go in the settings and unlock it. I'll probably get into that in another video, show you guys how to adjust different settings on the bike. If you can adjust your PAS levels, which I'm pretty sure you can, but... We'll get into that in another video, guys. I don't have a lot of time today to finish this video with the snow that's flying. So if you have any questions, let me know. And I'll leave a link down below for you guys to check out more information on this bike and to order one. If you guys are interested, it will be an affiliate link. So I will make a small commission, but that's what helps support this channel. 
And if you guys found this interesting and helpful and enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing and checking out my previews on Instagram. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you around on the next one. Whew.